Hi Aquarius, welcome to your September 2018 tarot and horoscope. So let's see what we've got going on for Aquarius. Ooh, Eight of Swords. Feeling restricted, which is not a comfortable place to, to be as an Aquarius. So one thing that I want to say about the current astrological implications. Now Virgo, um, which is where we have the sun and then we have a new moon in the ninth. That is actually occurring in your eighth house. And the eighth house is a very karmic house. It rules death and transformation and all the deep dark stuff which is Scorpio energy and if you're an Aquarius and you don't have any Scorpio in your chart you may not always be familiar with your own dark side and sometimes the Virgo energy for Aquarius can be just that. Now it's also a very seductive energy and it's very soulmate orientated so when we're dealing with a lot of eighth house planets oftentimes people can come into our lives that can be very karmic or karmic situations can appear. Also, we have Scorpio Venus. Venus moves into Scorpio in the ninth house, which is um, on the 9th of September, sorry, which yes, is your ninth house of travel and expansion. So expanding your mind. Really Aquarius, one thing I want to recommend to you is looking into past life karma. Um, if you can find somebody that can delve into your past life, it's very interesting to do. Or if you can uh, think about the, the actions you've taken in your life that you'd like to change. Or the areas in which you want to transform is one thing that I want to get off the get off the plate here. So other than that, let's look into what we've got going on for you guys. Um, don't forget Saturn and Pluto both go direct in Capricorn, which is your 12th house of subconscious this month. And that can mean... Oh... <laughs> <laughs> two of cups a love relationship seems to be here that can mean um that you really need to fine tune what your intuition is telling you so i wouldn't be surprised if the high priestess comes out maybe not but i'm sort of thinking it could uh it's almost like you have a lot of stuff that you need to sort of clear before you can get this so here's the ten of cups the nine of swords the Page of Wands, the Seven of Pentacles, and the King of Swords, and the Eight of Cups. Okay, Aquarius, this is interesting. I'm going to move this. We don't need that. Um, this is interesting because I'm seeing a couple of people, obviously with the court cards, we have King of Swords, which can be you. It can be you as an Aquarius. It can also be another Aquarius in your life or it can be a Gemini or it can be a Libra. And basically this is representing that relationship if you're dealing with an air sign. Could be sun, moon or rising, don't forget. Some people are more like their moon sign, some people are more like their rising sign. So a king of pentacles can be a king of swords. But what I'm trying to say is this person comes to the forefront this month. Now interesting, one thing that I want to point out um, because I I am the ultimate cross watcher of my own readings. I do know what's happened in the other one. So there is a strange link here I'm getting with Scorpio. Um, Scorpio had the same outcome. So Aquarius, you could be dealing with a Scorpio person. Um, I'm sort of getting that vibe. There is a bit of similarity here. Now, what's good about this? Well, the Page of Wands rules communication. Again, you could be dealing with a fire sign as well, Leo, Sagittarius, or an Aries. But for the most part, the Page of Wands represents messages which are coming from somebody else, someone offering you a message, somebody offering you something positive because the Page of Wands, he only offers something positive. Um, in the helpful position as well, this means that communication is um, working this month. Now, Virgo, energy... As I say for you, it is your 8th house. Mercury is moving into Virgo on the 6th and this means that communication with Scorpio as they are the 8th house is positive this month. So I'm seeing a dance there. For everyone else that's not dealing with that particular sign, it looks like communication is set to improve. It also looks like if you're dealing with a child because I see the family of the 10 of cups and I see the child as the page of wands. Um, it looks like if you're dealing with a child, there could be 
positive communication this month and understanding, getting through to somebody, letting the past be the past, letting bygones be bygones, letting things slide when it comes to a child. Now, I also see in some circumstances, Aquarius, uh, that you may be dealing with a little bit of anxiety, sleep paralysis, nightmares, um, restless sleep. And this is most likely down to the Mars energy in the cosmic climate. So Mars was retrograding in your sign for quite a while. It's going to move back into that sign. And it can be it can be uneasy because it was retrograding into the 12th house of subconscious. And the 12th house rules sleep. So with um, Saturn and Pluto both in that sector of the sky, it is, it's been, sleep has not been easy for Aquarius, Sun, Moon or rising. If it's your Venus that you're watching for, you'll not likely be as affected um, by that. But it certainly means for most Aquarians, the sleep thing, you've either been sleeping too little or too much, but your sleep is affected in some way or another to likely extremes. But to have the King of Swords as the outcome, I feel like that's being solved this month. Now, on the negative side, because there's a flip side to this reading, the Seven of Pentacles is in the challenge position. And that's where growth becomes an issue. Seeing the fruits of your labor becomes an issue. A common placement for that many retrogrades, growth hasn't been easy. It's also not been visible. So there is... Um, What's that term? Immediate gratification. There's a lack of immediate gratification with the things that you're trying to get going in your life, with the things you're trying to manifest, be it a relationship, be it a job, be it money. There is a lack of immediate gratification and a lot of people are very, very comfortable only with immediate gratification. So you want to put in the work and see something right away. That's not really happening here, but it doesn't mean that it's not happening, Aquarius. So be be mindful of that um, before you walk away from something where you feel like you're not seeing growth. Okay, I am seeing this as a relationship with great potential, whoever this King of Swords may be to you, um, but also a relationship that you're very, 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 very frightened of. Let me see. Okay. Okie dokie. Let me see. Aquarius, what I just said about waiting, um, for growth, wanting to see growth right away, really take heed of that. There is a possibility that you might throw something in the bin because you don't think it's working when you should be giving it a chance. I know that sounds strange. Um, depending on the situation, of course, these are all, you know, it's a general reading. It's a horoscope. It's con it, it has to have context. You have to apply your own context to the reading. But with the Ten of Swords, I feel like it's one of two things. It's either that the relationship has reached its its breaking point and it's done, or it's that you leave things unnecessarily because there is a potential here with the Four of Wands for a commitment. There's a potential for things to grow. The Four of Wands and the Three of Pentacles, things can grow. They're not growing at the minute. Some of you, I do think if worst case scenario has happened and you're trying to get over this relationship, now is the time to try other things. Because what's ironic about this is that there seems to be a commitment on the other side of this Ten of Swords. So either this is something that you've had to leave behind and you find happiness elsewhere, or this is a dire warning that just because you can't see the growth right now, Maybe things are moving too slow. Don't slip up and go elsewhere. Or don't just leave it behind. Be really sure if you're going to leave something that it is that you want to leave it. Because some of you might regret it. Um, I, I think this is you choosing to walk in some circumstances and regretting it. Um, it just it looks like, you know, the Ten of Swords and then the Eight of Swords backtracking on a decision. Do you know? 
the numerology of it, the 10 to the 8. And um, I feel like it was something with potential. Some of you might be married and consider leaving and then, you know, you, you put it out there and then you regret it because Mars being retrograde and your sign has been tricky in terms of your... Um, where you've been directing your feelings and your emotions, it's been misdirected. Especially with so much 12th house energy in the subconscious, you have been reflecting on others things that aren't for them. So you've been taking out your frustration on the wrong person and not the right person. It's almost like it's been mixed. But I'm seeing a potential here for a relationship to grow, a pretty happy one, where the outcome depends very much on what you do. Okay, so it's like you're in the driving seat is what I'm seeing. Uh, so I would caution Aquarius to make sure that you're making the right decision because with the Ten of... Oh, I just bit my tongue. Ow. With the Ten of Cups, there is such a possibility of a happily ever after in some circumstances. I think it's very different for each person. If you're entirely single, I see the Ten of Swords as being the end of that, like the end of your singledom. Do you know what I mean? The Ten of Swords is typically the end of something. And I see for a lot of you that are completely single, the end of a negative dating cycle. And for others of you that are in a relationship that doesn't seem to be moving quick enough or there's there seems to be a lot of questions, it's like you, you cut it off or you do something um maybe you try and make this person jealous with somebody younger and it backfires I feel like a lot of you are dealing with somebody with great potential and it's almost like you rebuff them and again this is very similar to the Scorpio reading so I'm kind of wondering if a lot of you are dealing with a Scorpio and you're not seeing enough movement so you end it and regret it I just feel like there seems to be some kind of dynamic here whereby you might walk away from something too soon and have regret so maybe wait till like the middle of the month to make a decision. Venus is going to be going retrograde in October. And a lot of the times when decisions are made just before that, they don't tend to stick because then it retrogrades back into that area. You get deja vu romantically and things don't necessarily um, end the same. But I think what this reading wants you to know, Aquarius, is that you have to caution yourself in making a decision, whether it's career or whether it's romantic, because the page of wands can be career. You can be getting new opportunities and um, jump off mid ladder. I'm looking at the ladder here. You feel like you're not climbing up the ladder with this and you see other opportunities, but don't jump too quickly. Okay, just make sure that you're... Um, Make sure that you you really see what's going on because I think your intuition is a bit skewed, to be honest. And um, I feel like you're not listening to your subconscious. And I think you should. You know, to avoid any unnecessary damage is what I'm saying here, Aquarius. If you're if you're one hundred percent sure that you want to walk away in something, what came out there? Where is it? Ah, yes, Dana, High Priestess. Didn't I say that she would come out? I did. Anyway, listen to your intuition. You have divine knowledge that can help others through spiritual teaching, but you can also listen to your own intuition. So let's see what else we're getting here. Oh, here we go. Inner wisdom. Intuition, inner wisdom, you know what to do. Trust your inner intuition trust your inner wisdom I'll draw one more I'm almost I'm almost wondering Aquarius now this could be a far reach for some of you but are you maybe looking at somebody because I saw this quote earlier and it said, unless you heal yourself, unless you heal your wounds, you will bleed on everyone else. And it was by this astrologer. I think she's called, she's Scorpio Mystique, I think she's called. Um, go outside. Get some fresh air. Okay, so connecting with nature is important. It's funny because these are sort of similar. 
the flowers being in nature helps Aquarius. Um, she was saying that, you know, you can, you can open your wounds, um, for the, you know, for the wrong person. Like you can, you can be judging somebody by someone else. And I'm almost thinking Aquarius, do any of you have a fire sign X that you've maybe been reflecting on this new person for? Like maybe the, the fire sign did something in the past and, uh, you're not with them anymore, but the pain's still there and you're, you're waiting and waiting and waiting for something to go wrong. And as we know with the law of attraction, the more you believe something's going to happen, the more it happens. There could be a cycle here. You could believe the worst in the people you're dating and then it manifests. So just be mindful that you're not judging somebody by the standard you've put someone else to and make sure that your decision is intuitive. You're trusting yourself. You know what you're doing. You believe in yourself. You're meditating. You're taking time to make these decisions and you're going with your gut. So I hope you enjoyed that reading Aquarius. I will see you in the mid-monthlies. Take care. Bye-bye.